I did not just buy this graphics card brand new. I didn't do it, guys. I didn't do it. I did not. <laughs> I did it. I lost a lot of money. <laughs> Me, you. Have you been meditating to the Windows 10 Pro licenses? Well, if you have, then today's video sponsor is gonna make sure that you don't need to meditate any longer. With legit Windows 10 Pro licenses for $15, when you use the link in the description below and the coupon code TYC, you can get yourself activated today. Links in the description below. Nvidia's RTX 3000 launch has caused the used GPU market to go into what could simply be described as panic mode where people are starting to sell off their RTX 2080 Ti's and also RTX 2080's and even 2070 Supers in mass. And what we're gonna be talking about today is what should you do in this situation if you're a buyer or you're a seller. Now, we're gonna start with the problem first because if we identify what the problem is, we can then look at the solution. Now, the problem in my opinion is really quite simple and I'm gonna be talking off experience based on what happens locally in my market. So what we had here was a situation where before the RTX 3000 was even announced, we had used GPUs being overpriced. Now with the announcement, we saw two cards in particular, the RTX 3070 and 3080. They came in with a $500 USD price point for the 3070 and a $700 price point for the 3080. Now my gut tells me that the 3080 is going to obliterate everything currently on the market at this point in time. There's gonna be a no contest. The 3070, however, is an interesting card. Jensen in the announcement said that this is gonna give the similar performance to a 2080 Ti. Now my gut tells me the 2080 Ti is gonna perform just a little bit better from the get-go. And here's one thing about Nvidia leaks too. The day before the live stream, Gamewood posted up some images on their site and they were actually wrong. And then people went and said, oh, this is what the Nvidia announcement is going to be and then people went and took that information and said this is what's going to be announced during the live stream It's going to be seven nanometers it's going to have this amount of CUDA cores, etc And they were completely wrong So what we can tell from that live stream is that Nvidia are extremely tight-lipped on what gets leaked to the public Even a day before release no one knew exactly what was going to come out of that live stream And so going forward, I don't even know when an RTX 3080 is going to rock through my studio so I can do start doing some testing and of course since I've signed an NDA, I cannot release any results until the NDA lift date for that information and those benchmarks. So the bottom line is, is that coming into this, I didn't know what was gonna happen in the GPU market, but I made a previous video saying that I thought the RTX 3000 series was going to fix the used GPU market, or at least I hoped it would. And within that video, I did give out some advice saying, look, this is going to be a massive launch where it's better if you're feeling unsafe about your purchase, it's better to sell your graphics card now, get what you can for it, instead of waiting and risking and seeing what happens with the new launches. And I knew this launch was going to be big. It's a node shrink and it's also an architectural performance improvement over the previous generation. Those two things combined together generally means big gains. Now, depending on which side of the fence you're on, you can see this announcement as either a big problem or a big blessing. Now, if you're a seller, this is gonna be a big problem because the RTX 3000 series, in all honesty, what it looks like from so far is that it's a lot bigger than anyone expected. And of course, you got the question of, are these gains actually gonna be real? And to be honest, I think they are. And the reason being is you got the consoles being launched later this year, and of course, AMD's big Navi will be coming out. And Nvidia always like to be one step ahead of their competition. So these gains are just so big because they wanna keep that market share and they wanna keep ahead of the competition. So you can expect that 80% gain roughly from the RTX 2080 to the 3080. I believe that will be roughly what it will do. But if you've bought one of these cards recently, an RTX 2000 series card, do not worry because honestly, there's a lot more things that could go wrong in your life. For instance, in 2008, I bought stock right before the crash. I bought it literally the worst time to buy stock in market history and I lost a lot of money. And so that was something I had when I was starting out investing in stocks, is that it's all about timing. And that's why I said to people in the previous video, it's always better to just wait when there's a really big launch up around the corner. It's always better to wait and if possible, just sell off your gear before the announcement happens than it is to wait and of course, 
look at what's going on in the markets. So let's jump on our good old computer and check out what exactly is going on in the used market. So here we are now on good old eBay and we're gonna go over later to my local markets, both Facebook Marketplace and good old Gamtree. So the US uh, pricing here will be for eBay and then we move over to my local markets. So I'll actually be in Australian dollars. But what you can see straight away is so many 2080 Ti's up for sale. And now a lot of these are going on free bid. There's uh, buy it nows for around 600 USD and more. And essentially, this is a secondhand card a lot of the times. You are still buying a used card, so do keep that in mind versus a new card. You don't know what environment that's been in. Someone could have been vaping, blowing a heap of oil over it. Uh, other things that could have not been installed 100% could be on its way out. There's the list of problems that come with buying a used card. So these new cards, especially the 3070, touted at having the same performance as the 2080 Ti, and then coming in at 500 bucks with also better power efficiency, and this is a big one, as well as better support for things like DLSS2 and uh, NVIDIA's ray tracing. This makes the value for money of the new cards, even at new prices, much better than anyone thought. And so you're going to see this chain reaction following through now where people are like, well, damn, I want to go out and get a 3080. And so if I sell this for 500 bucks, it's only another $200 and I can upgrade to the latest and greatest. So that's what a lot of people selling these cards are gonna be thinking in the back of their mind right now. And if they can offload them for a good price, then kudos to them. But what should you be paying for one of these graphics cards? Well, I'd say honestly for a 2080 Ti, and this is me being risk adverse, I'm not gonna be going out and buying 2080 Ti's and 2080's at the moment because I'm honestly gonna wait and see uh, the performance of especially the 3080, because if the 3080 comes out and it's as good as NVIDIA has been touting it to be, then we can pretty much ascertain from that that the subsequent cards, the 3070 and also the 3090, are going to be very good too. So everyone's got their eyes on the 17th of September. So you're probably wondering at this point, what should you be paying for an RTX 2080 Ti? And I wouldn't pay any more than 500 USD. In fact, I'd try and be searching for them and getting them as low as 450 USD. That to me is a very low side risk purchase, right? You're not gonna lose a whole lot. If the 3070 comes out and it's got similar performance, you've still gotten a decent deal. If the 3070 comes out and it slightly performs less, then you're gonna have a card with slightly better performance, gonna use more power, and it's gonna have more VRAM. So there are still a couple of upsides if you get this card for a decent price. Now, what about a 2080 Super and a 2080? Well, this is where the price starts to crunch down and it's not going to get that much different, right? A 2080 Super is probably going to go for around 400 US, maybe a little bit lower, but that's a realistic expectation. So if you're paying any more for these cards, then you may risk yourself in a month's time having a card that's not worth as much as you thought it should be. So basically, if we go over to buy it now, 650 USD, for a 2080 Ti, I wouldn't be buying these now at 650 USD. That's just my gut reaction with what we're seeing. Now, if I go over to my local markets, this guy um, right here wanted to buy RTX 2080 today, 500 bucks. He's kind of like, he's got his prices set. And honestly, they whoever set this ad up two hours ago, I didn't even see this just until now. This is actually pretty much right around what I would be paying for these cards. That's, that's about it in Australian dollars. Now, one Aussie dollar is weaker than a US dollar, but yeah, 2080 Ti's for 800 Aussie dollars, 2080 Supers for 550. Now, if we go on ebay.com.au, these are about 1200 Aussie dollars on the used market. And even right below here, we can see we've got one for 1200 Aussie dollars negotiable. So the 2080s and the 2080 Supers, I believe at these current price points are still overpriced for what they are. So now moving over to Facebook Marketplace, we've got a similar story. There's just a heap of RTX 2080s and 2080 Ti's on the market. And honestly, for what it's worth, I wouldn't be buying any of these cards at their current price points. So I mean, I'll keep a lookout if I see RTX 2080s going for 500 bucks or 550, 2080 Supers, then I'll be buying that. That, that guy, honestly, whoever this guy is, uh, he's just nailed it. Like he pretty much just nailed it in his one ad and that's just ironic that it comes up right here today. So now with all that out of the way, I'll quickly put up a pricing guide for you guys on what I'll be paying for 2080 Supers and 2080 Ti's and also 2070 Supers. It's pretty much the same as that dude on Gumtree. He pretty much nailed it for prices. And the reason why the prices have dropped so low compared to what they were going for a month ago is of course this new use, but people also 
don't want to take the risk, right? If you're flipping PCs and you're going out and buying RTX 2080 Supers and 2080 Ti's, are you going to take that risk? If the 3070 is not as fast as the 2080 Ti, sure, you probably made a few, a couple of hundred bucks, but there's a risk that it is pretty much exactly right around the 2080 Ti's performance and the 3080 is going to be a lot faster. And so if that is real and that's released to the market at the set prices, then you're going to be up for, I guess, potential, a lot of potential downside. And you'll be sitting on these cards that no one wants because when it comes to flipping a PC, I find especially the GPU is the most important. The newer the graphics card and the more VRAM it has, the more people uh, stick to that listing. And especially with RTX 3000 versus 2000, people are going to be wanting to buy gaming PCs with RTX 3000 in them versus RTX 2000. So that's the biggest thing at the moment. I think a lot of people are sitting back like myself. I don't want to buy these cards because I'm waiting for 3000 series to come because I don't want to take on the risk personally. So essentially offering prices where your potential downside risk to losing money is minimized, that's going to be the safest option going forwards. So in closing out today's video, I'm going to say a few things and that is RTX 3000 has seriously shaken up the market. This was probably one of the biggest announcements of all time in the GPU market, especially because it comes at a time where PC gaming is more popular than ever. So there's much more people buying graphics cards than there ever was with the 7 series going to the 9 series, for example. And actually, to be honest, this uh, used flipping thing going on right now reminds me of exactly the 780 when the 970 was released. That came in at 330 bucks. And before that, the 780 was going for $500 US. And I sold my card right before the announcement because I just thought 9 Series was going to be really big. And it was. And then straight away, on when I was in Japan at the time, the Yahoo auctions, straight away, all the 780s were going then for pretty much 970 prices. And so people were just getting rid of them. And then after 970 came, it was pretty much as people thought. It was roughly around 780 performance. And so people were then selling off all their 780s even cheaper than what they were initially selling them after the announcement. So my guess would be that if you are serious about getting an RTX 3000 series card and you wanna sell your 2000 series card, it'd be better to sell it now. But the RTX 3000 series, I was hoping it would fix the used GPU market, but from what I'm seeing with the pricing is the used GPU market still really isn't fixed. And I think this trend of overpriced used GPUs is just going to continue forward to the point where people are probably just going to start just forgetting about the used GPU market in general and just buying new GPUs. So basically coming out of that 9 series launch over the 7 series launch was there was two lessons that I learned, big lessons. And that was, first of all, always do your own research. And so I did my own research before this launch and everything was pointing towards it being a massive, massive launch, which the 9 series was over the 7 series. This time around with the RTX 3000 series, I knew it was going to be a big launch. I just didn't think it would be this big. But all the research was pointing towards, look, sell your stuff before the announcement. So if you did that, you made a really good choice. The second lesson I learned from that is always only spend what you're prepared to lose. So when I initially bought that GTX 780 a few months before the 9 series announcement, I got it for 480 USD. And so I wasn't prepared to lose the potential $150 or so that could come with the 970 launch. So I sold it before that 970 launch and in hindsight, I made the right decision. Now, if you've got an RTX 2000 series card, there is some good news going forward and that is you're not gonna lose a whole lot more money going forward. That's because the market's pricing these cards at 500 USD a pop might go down to 450, even $400. But me personally, when I'm coming to buying these cards potentially here locally, I'm only putting down what I'm prepared to lose. So that's why when you see that guy on Gumtree, he pretty much nailed the head with his pricing structure. I mean, just like, I don't know, whoever this dude is, you got to drop a comment in the comment section below because you're pretty much right on the money there in terms of the downside potential versus the upside potential. So with that aside, do let us know in the comment section below what you think of this whole RTX 3000 series shakeup. This is just, for me personally, it's like, it's honestly going to be exciting times, especially since I do the used PC parts hunt of the month. Things are going to be just exciting till Christmas, I think, where this whole market has now been shaken up and we're going to have new consoles launching. There's just going to be whole new builds and new comparisons. And for me personally, it felt like before this, tech was getting a little bit boring. But I feel like this announcement was like Jensen 
giving the market a stim pack if you guys played StarCraft. He's like giving the Marine a stim pack and it's, I'll just play that little voice clip for you. <laughs> Anyway, guys, with that aside, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. And also, we've got the question of the day here, which comes from Crypto M, and they ask, do you think I can run a 3080 with 3600X with a 650 watt power supply? If it's a really good 650 watt power supply, just like just a solid one with a heap of amps on the 12 volt line, then you're gonna be absolutely fine, especially if you're not overclocking your 3600X. The 750 watt uh, power supply is a recommendation that's just to say, hey, like if you're going out and say buying a 10 core 10900K, you're going to be fine with a 750 watt power supply with 32 gigabytes of RAM, four hard drives. Uh, you should be fine with a 650 watt power supply. As uh, witnessed in the past when I was running a 2080 Ti with a 3950X on a 450 watt power supply. So NVIDIA is just doing that so they don't have any problems with people buying their graphics cards. And so it's just a big association thing, right? If you bought a power supply that was underpowered and you got an NVIDIA graphics card and then it starts having problems, you may associate those problems with NVIDIA and that's why NVIDIA doesn't want that. So they're recommending to get a power supply more than the required real limit of the cards. Anyhow guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've stayed this far and you're enjoying that content, may wish to hit that sub button, ring that bell. And one thing I will say before I get on out of here, is these are just my opinions too. I just analyze what information is out there and then just give you guys down to earth, realistic uh, recommendations based on that. But those two lessons, don't forget them. And that is do your own research and only ever put down what you're prepared to lose. Hope this video has helped you and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.